Hi, I'm Larry Levin of the St. Louis Jewish Light, and once again with me, Bob Cohen, our Editor-in-Chief Emeritus, to talk about issues of the day. Bob, welcome. Glad to be here again. Uh, Bob, earlier this month, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu formally asked uh, President Barack Obama to commute the sentence of Jonathan Pollard, who spent more than 25 years in American federal prison for leaking U.S. intelligence information to Israel. What do you think uh, President Obama should do? I think President Obama should follow Netanyahu's request. As a matter of fact, I was one of the early, and speaking strictly personally, because I could never get a consensus from the editorial committee on the release of Pollard. It was a very third rail issue, but he has already served longer in 25 years than many of those who were convicted of spying on behalf of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So I think that his uh, sentence uh, should be commuted. To Why should he be treated any differently than, uh, say, anybody else who's held in prison for treason? Uh, well, he hasn't really so far. I mean, the, the only other case that's comparable was the execution of both uh, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, mm -hmm. uh, who coincidentally happened to be Jewish on the opposite of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. What he was most culpable was when he released, a, it was almost like a WikiLeaks dumping of the names of some of our CIA station chiefs, and mm -hmm. I think that's what upset the, the, the intelligence community. Mm -hmm. But I think that he has more than served sufficient time in solitary confinement, mostly. You wrote this week about the changing face of the Arab world yes. uh, with protests and unrest marking several countries. Yes. And in fact, Egypt's situation has worsened, worsened even since you wrote that. Exactly. Um, and Yemen has been added to the list. And Yemen. Is this a, a trend that will continue? And do you think it will uh, lead to, on the one hand, democracy and economic development for these uh, countries or opportunities for terrorist groups to fill the gap? I think both. Uh, it, it, each country is individual and each has its own dynamics. For example, the first blush about Lebanon looked as if we would end up with a Shiite-controlled pro-Syrian government, mm -hmm. but the first interview of the new prime minister designate mm -hmm. indicates that he's going to steer his own course. He said he would not put aside the uh, international tribunal, the tribunal which is expected to indict Hezbollah members. It could, it could be the Gdansk of uh, the Middle East, as Richard Cohen suggested in the Washington Post, but each country has its own internal dynamic. Yeah, let's talk about Lebanon for a minute because uh, Najib Magadi, who's the, yes. the billionaire who is uh, going to ascend to the prime minister role, you know, how does one assess him? Do you assess him like Jerry Adams in Northern Ireland, you know, who was responsible for bringing terrorism uh, into the political, or a previous terrorist group into the political arena? Or do you see it as a front for continued terrorism? Actually, how do you make that analysis? It might very well emerge as the Michael Bloomberg of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a self-made billionaire. Mm -hmm. He's a very cultured and intellectual guy. Mm -hmm. And he's in his first statements, he was pretty bold in saying he's going to be his own guy. He's not going to be the pawn of Hezbollah. You know, Lebanon has a what they call a multi-confessional system, mm -hmm. where the president has to be a Maronite Christian, the prime minister has to be a Sunni Muslim, mm -hmm. and the speaker of the house has to be a Shiite mm -hmm. Muslim, and then the, the Druze have been traditionally defense ministers. So that constitution, which was put in place by France back in the 1930s, kind of forces people to make compromises. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, and both the U.S. and Israel have been smart not to jump to conclusions that it's going to necessarily be terrible for the mm -hmm. region or Israel. Let's move all the way from Lebanon to Iowa. Um, and and uh, this week, the ACLU and other groups uh, came out asking uh, the federal court to, uh, and uh, prosecutors to consider uh, a reduction in the sentence of uh, Sholem Rabashkin, uh, who headed up Agriprocessors, um, the meatpacking company that was uh, charged with uh, financial fraud several months ago, and many had argued that the sentence that Rabashkin was serving was uh, far greater than those in comparable uh, situations. This is interesting because the ACLU has often been on the opposite side of the ultra-Orthodox community on issues of separation of church and state. Right, and of course locally the ACLU on whose board I serve is supporting Fred Phelps, as obnoxious as he might be, mm -hmm. and against their basic thrust. I do agree, after further research, that maybe the Rubashkin sentence is an example of excess of prosecutorial zeal. There may even be elements of that in the Rob Lagojevich case. That some, just because somebody has committed various offenses doesn't mean that they should throw the book at that individual. And there was talk that the judge had, 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 had been in contact with the prosecutors for months and months before the actual trial, uh, you know, talking about, with the search warrants and subpoenas and the, and the other, and that she was too tied to and too connected to 
the prosecution in the case. Exactly. Uh -huh. I think it deserves a second look. Let's, um, since we've gone as far west as Iowa, let's continue west and go to Los Angeles. Of course, one of the things that warms the cockles of your heart, which is the Oscar nominations, oh, yes. came out last week, and uh, quite the um, the Jewish theme uh, in the nominations. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you have Natalie Portman, who probably is the first uh, Sabra Israeli to be given a major nomination mm -hmm. uh, for Best Actress. Mm -hmm. Her acting in Black Swan is stunning and, and powerful. It's a very disturbing movie that I haven't really recommended to friends as entertainment. Mm -hmm. But she clearly deserves that uh, nomination. Uh, the King's Speech uh, is significant to the Jewish world in as much as that talk that the King gave with the training of his that incredible uh, speech pathologist. Played by Jeffrey Rush. Played by Jeffrey. And he's also a nominee. Uh, and Colin Firth, who looks a lot like the real King. Mm -hmm. That speech was given on September the 3rd, 1939, mm -hmm. literally the day before I was born. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, uh, this King was opposed to the Nazis, whereas the guy who abdicated so he could marry Wally Simpson mm -hmm. was known to be sympathetic to the Nazis. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's significant in that regard as well. Mm -hmm. Bob, thanks so much, and we'll be back next time uh, to talk about more issues of the day. Take care. As always, thank you.